الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ومن اتبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد to proceed in today's lesson we're going to continue our explanation of the fundamentals of Arabic grammar in our previous lesson we introduced the three states marfu'un, mansubun, and majrurun, and we gave a brief explanation regarding what those states represent and how we recognize them by their various endings. So today, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala, we're going to continue and introduce another meta connected to the ismun, or the noun, and that is asma'un wasifatun, or nouns and adjectives, as we would say in English. Asma'un being the plural of ismun, and sifatun being the plural of sifatun. So to begin therefore, if we write an ismun on the board, and we're going to write the word walid. Now, based upon what we said previously, whenever a student or a learner should see a word written without an ending, that should alert their attention to two matters. The first is, what is the ending on that ismun? And secondly, why is it in that state? So based upon what we've already explained, what would be the reason for uh, an ending being upon here? What would be its purpose? What would it signify? What we would write on the end is Tanwinu Dhammin and it would be Tanwinu Dhammin because as we mentioned previously this is an Ismun by itself it hasn't been acted upon by a fitnun, a verb, nor has it been preceded by a harfu jarrin, for example, that would change its state. So the first question is, what is the ending? And the ending is tanwinu dhammin. And the second question we ask ourselves is, why is it tanwinu dhammin? And the answer to that is, is because it's in its default state. And the default state for any ismun, as we mentioned, is marfu'un. Remember, marfu'un meaning raised. So it's like the marking, the vowel marking has been raised above the word. And it indicates that the word itself is in its default state, not being subject to any change by any word that precedes it. So that's waladun a boy. It's not particularly interesting as it is and that's the reason why we need to add something to it to describe it. So what we're going to do is describe this uh, boy or a boy as a tall boy. Now the word in Arabic for tall is tawilun. <laughs> Tawilun. Now, as we can see, I've written the word that's going to, that has described waladun after the word waladun. So first we have waladun and then tawilun, which means a tall boy. As we can see, that's different to how it is in English. In English, the adjective or the describing word comes first and then we have the word that it describes so a tall boy in Arabic it's the opposite we have boy first and then tall waladun tawilun now even though both of these words are an ismun they are a noun one of them performs a different role to a naming word and that is, it's an adjective. It describes the word that precedes it. 
And that, in Arabic, has a particular name. It's called, as we mentioned in our introduction, Sifatun. Sifatun is a description or an attribute. So it describes Waladun. Tawilun describes Waladun and it becomes a tall boy. So our description is called Sifatun and in Arabic grammar there is a word which we use to describe Waladun and that is Mawsufun. Mawsufun. So we have a Mawsufun here which is a word that has been described and we have the Sifatun here the word which is describing and together they make the phrase more interesting because it gives us a description of Waladun. Now in relation to the rules concerning Sifatun and Mawsufun they are four in number and the purpose of the remainder of this lesson is to explain, again it will be in a brief manner because these are only introductory uh, lessons and they'll gradually become more complicated but the purpose is to explain those four rules and the first of those rules that relate to the Sifatun and the Mosufun is called Al-I'rabu Al-I'rabu Now Al-I'rabu or Irabun it relates to grammatical analysis and we frequently see this word Irabun when we talk about for example Irabu Hadhihi Al-Ayah the grammatical analysis of this Ayah or Irabu Hadhihi Al-Jumla the grammatical analysis of this jumla, this sentence. And the reason why Al-I'rabu is important here is because from the rules relating to Sifatun and Mawsufun with regards to agreement or relationship is that they must match in Al-I'rabu in their grammatical state which we've already mentioned in our previous lesson. So the Sifatun here it must match the Mawsufun in Al-I'rabu, in its grammatical state. So we know that Waladun is in the Marfu'un state. We know that because of its indicator. Its indicator being the Dhamma. Even though there are two Dhammas on, we say that the indicator is the Dhamma. So therefore we know that Waladun is in the Marfu'un state. Therefore, according to the first rule of agreement between the Sifatun and the Mawsufun, if the Mawsufun is Marfu'un, the Sifatun has to be similarly Marfu'un. And as you can see, we've written it with a Dhamma or Tanwinu Dhammin in order for it to match Waladun. So together, they form a correct phrase or grammatically correct phrase to indicate a tall boy so we are uh, in a agreement with regards to Sifatun and Mawsufun with in relation to an irabu the grammatical uh, state of them similarly if I was to write on the board waladun طويل ولد طويلا in this fashion ولد طويلا even though the individual words mean the same as the ones here it would be grammatically incorrect and the reason being is because طويل here tall does not match ولد in الإعرابو reason being because ولد is in the Mansubun state and Tawilun is in the Marfu'un state and as we mentioned in order for us to satisfy the first rule of Al-I'rab with regards to agreement 
this must be in the same state. So we need to change Tawilun to Tawilun. And we do so by placing Tanwinu Fatin on the top and then adding an Alif and that's for the purpose of writing and not pronunciation. So it becomes Waladan Tawilan. Now it's grammatically correct because it's an agreement in relation to Ali Rabu. However, as soon as you see this, you as a student of Arabic should look at it and you should think that although it matches in Ali Rab, it's still grammatically incorrect. Why? Because it's not in its default state. We cannot say Waladan Tawilan. It's not grammatically correct for the reason that it's not Marfu'un. So either we're going to have to change it to Waladun Tawilan in order to match this, or we need to introduce a word that would make this phrase grammatically correct for it to be in the Masubun state. And in our previous lesson, the type of word that we mentioned is the fi'lun, a verb. So if we introduce a verb, we say, for example, ra'a. Ra'a means he saw. Who did he see? He saw waladan tawilan, a tall boy. Now that's a grammatically correct sentence. And we introduced the ra'a in order for you to appreciate that even though we're speaking about sifatun and mausufun here, the other rules still apply. The remainder of the rules are still applicable with the regards to sentence construction. Now, the third possibility, of course, is that waladun is going to be majrurun. Waladin, and therefore tawilan here, and tawilun here would have to be tawilin in order for us to satisfy the rule relating to al irabu it must be waladin tawilun tawilin rather now when you look at that waladin tawilun you should ask yourself the same question but just wait You've written waladin tawilin in order to de demonstrate the agreement of al Arab between sifatun and mausufun, but now it's not grammatically correct because it shouldn't be in the majrurun state. So, in order for us to correct it, we need to introduce a harfu jarrin. For example, uh, we'll introduce li. Li by itself is written in that fashion but when you connect it to an ismun then it connects to the ismun in that fashion li means four or uh, two here it means four so li here if we attach it to waladin it becomes the meaning li waladin tawilin which is four a tall boy li waladin tawilin so here we have our three states again which we're always going to refer back to so it's useful to familiarize yourself with those three terms marfu and mansuba majurun and similarly it's useful to constantly see examples of them waladun tawilun is in its default state a tall boy ra'a waladun tawilan is in the mansuban state he saw a tall boy, and li waladin tawilin is in the majrurun state for a tall boy. And in each of these instances, we've satisfied ali rabu, so we're content with that. Now, if we erase these two sentences and move on to the next rule with regards to. Uh, agreement between Sifatun and Mausufun. And the next rule is Al Jinsu. Al Jinsu. 
And al jinsu, it relates to gender. Gender in relation to words. In Arabic, there are two genders. Either words are male, and they're referred to as mudhakkarun, or they're female, and that, that term is mu'annath, or mu'annathun, if we're going to pronounce the ending. That is al jinsu gender, either male, mudhakkarun, or female, mu'annathun. Now, most words in Arabic are mudhakkarun male. So, for example, waladun is clearly a male word because its meaning suggests that. Similarly, the other words that we've mentioned, kitabun, a book, is a male word. Qalamun is a male word. Now, there's no indicator on the word itself to indicate that it is masculine. But assume that every word is masculine unless you see, for example, a ta'u marbuta. A ta'u marbuta is a letter which is attached to a word in Arabic to indicate that it is mu'annathun female. For example, ta'wilatun. I'm going to have to rewrite the term Rabuta here. Tawila. So Tawila Tun means a table. And as you can see, it has a Tamarbuta on the end. And that Tamarbuta is an indicator that that word is female. The Tamarbuta is an indicator that the word is female. And that's important in relation to the Sifatun and Mausufun because as we said, they have to match in gender al-jinsu. So for example, if we are going to say a tall table, we have Tawilatun here, I'll just erase it and write it so it's straight. If we are going to say tawila, tawilatun, and we want to say a tall table, we know what the word for tall is, tawil. So if we write tawil here, tawilun, is that now correct according to this rule here, al jinsu? Well, tawilatun is the mausufun is a word that's been described and it is female as you can see by the term rabuta. but now tawilun it means tall it is a sifatun but is it male or is it a female word well there's no term rabuta on the ending and we did say that most words in arabic if they don't have that indicator then almost certainly will be female uh, rather they most certainly will be male if they don't have the tamarabuta on the end this word it doesn't have the tamarabuta on the end and i can say with complete certainty that that is a female word uh, rather male word tawil on tall so if we add the tamarabuta on the end and this is how you would turn or change the word in order that it becomes female at the tamarabuta on the end of the ismun now they match in al-jinsu in gender so we have tawilatun tawilatun and it fulfills this condition does it fulfill the condition of al arabu well we can see that tawilatun is marfu'un and tawilatun similarly is marfu'un, so yes it does. Now the other point to, to, to note with regards to male and female words, as I said, almost all words are male, unless they have a tamarbut on the end. However, certain words don't have tamarbut on the end, and yet are still female. The first of those categories are words that have a female meaning. For example, 
Binton. Binton means a girl or a daughter. It doesn't have tamarbut on the end, but nevertheless, it is a female word. How do we know that? Because it has a female meaning. So if we were going to say a tall girl, we would say bintun tawilatun. We would use tawilatun, not tawilun, because tawilun is tall and it's a masculine, masculine word, whereas tawilatun is the feminine version. So we have bintun and similarly we have ummun, a mother. And of course, ummun would obviously be a female word because it relates to a mother. Then there's another category of words that don't have a, uh, a tamarabut on the end, but are female, but they don't necessarily convey a female meaning, such as the word bi'run. Bi'run, which means well as in a drinking well. Now this word bi'run is a female word. And one of the reasons that we know that for absolute certainty is that Allah mentioned in Surah Al-Hajj wa bi'rin mu'attalatin and a well, as in the ayah, a well which is mu'attalah, which has been abandoned or in a state of disrepair. Um, and Mu'attala has a term or a boot on the end, so we know that Bi'run is a female word. Similarly, there are other words such as Darun. Darun, which interestingly means a house, is a female word, whereas the other word that we mentioned, Baytun, is a male word. Both of them relate to a house. But nevertheless, uh, as we mentioned, most words are male unless they have a tamarabuta on the end. So for example, ma'idatun. Ma'idatun. And um, we'll be familiar with the word ma'idatun because the fifth surah in Al-Quran is named suratun ma'idah. And interestingly, ma'idatun, even though it relates to a table, it's different from tawilatun. And one of the reasons for its difference is because Ma'idatun relates to a table laden with food. And we know that because of the ayah in Surah Al-Ma'idah where the disciples of Isa alayhi salam they uh, asked him, Ya Isa ibn Maryam, hal yastati rabbuka an yunazil alayna ma'idatun min as uh, O Isa, the son of Maryam, can your Lord send down to us a table laden with food? Nurida nakul minha, we want to eat from it. And that's the difference in tawilatun and ma'idatun. Tawilatun is an ordinary table that can be used for any purpose, whereas ma'idatun is a special table used, uh, or the term is used to denote, to represent a table laden with food. So returning back to our rules of agreement, they agree in al-Irab ad al-Jinsu. The third matter that they must agree in is ta'rifu wa tankir. Ta'rifu. I'll write it here. Wa tankir. Tankiru. I think it might be useful if, let's write the English here, so Al-Irabu relates to the state of the word, Al-Jinsu relates to the gender of the word, Al-Tarif wa Tankir, these two terms, Al-Tarif relates to the word itself having Alif Alam, so being known, being uh, identifiable. So we'll say known and similarly tenkir is something which is unknown. So if you remember from my previous lesson we said that when an ismun has a tanweenun on the end such as tanweenu dhammin or indeed tanweenu fathin or tanweenu kasrin 
then we say it is in that condition, a tenkir, unknown. It's indefinite. Waladun tawilun could be any tall boy. Qalamun uh, could be any pen. Kitabun could be any pen. The tanwinun, the un and an in sound at the end, that's what denote to represent the ismun being unknown, a tenkir. The opposite is a ta'rif. If the ismun has al before it, then we know that it is ta'rif. It is something which is known, such as al al qalam, al kitabu, al waladu, the boy, the pen, the book. All of these indicate that it is something which is known. Now, there must be agreement between the Sifatun and Mausufun with regards to a ta'rif wa tankir. Do these two uh, examples match with regards to a ta'rif wa tankir? Well, waladun, is that known or unknown? We say that that is unknown. Why? What's the indicator? The tanweenun at the end is tawilatun, a table, that, is that known or unknown? Again, that is something which is unknown, therefore, in both instances, the sifatun will end with the tanweenun, and it will match the mausufun in it being unknown. The opposite of that is if we say, for example, We'll mention the table again, laden with food. Alma ida tu atawila tu. Alma ida tu atawila tu. Now we have alma ida, which is a table laden with food. It begins with al al. That's the lam of ta'rif, as we mentioned in our previous lesson, meaning the lam that makes it definite. It moves it from a state of being indefinite to one which is known. So we say al ma'idah. If we now want to qualify al ma'idah with a tawila, a tall, a tall table laden with food, then similarly our sifatun must have a lam attached, an alif lam attached to it. So it's in agreement with al ma'idah. And as you can see there, I've written it, al ma'idah at tawilah which indicates that it matches in a ta'rif wa tankir. In this instance, it's a ta'rif, something which is known. And again, in al irab it matches. In both instances, they are the words are mansubun. In al so it matches because this is female and this is female. And similarly, it matches in at tarif wa tankir in that both of them are mu'arrafa or something which is known. So that is the third rule with regards to agreement between sifatun and mausufun. Which then takes us, let me raise this in order to make room, it then takes us to the fourth and the final rule with regards to agreement. And that is, use a correct pen, al adadu. Al adadu, which refers to the number. The number. Now, <clears throat> the number in Arabic, it relates to the ismun. And what we mean by it is that an ismun in Arabic can have three uh, versions relating to its number. The first is singular, as in waladun. We know that waladun means a single boy, just as qalamun means a single pen, just as hatifun means a single telephone, baytun a single house. So waladun means a boy. In Arabic, you can also have a dual, 
It's called Al Muthanna, the dual. And the dual of an ismun is uh, made by adding ani onto the end. So, for example, waladun becomes waladani. Waladani. So we move from waladun to waladani by adding the ani on the end. Of course, the tanween or dhammin has gone. It's been re replaced by a single fatha. And then on the noon, we have a kasra. However, please be aware that even though this states waladani and the kasra is ordinarily an indicator for the ismun being majroor, in this instance, waladani is still marfu'un. It's still the marfu'un state. And this will be discussed in greater detail in future le lessons, insha'Allah. However, for the, the purpose of this lesson, and just to introduce this idea of agreement in an adadu, all that we're going to say is that we formed the dual by adding ani onto the end of walad. Uh, so it became waladani. Now, we know that to say a tall boy, meaning a single tall boy, we say waladun tawil. So what if we want to say two tall boys? Remember that the sifatun and the mausufun must match in al-adad, al-adadu number. What we can't do, therefore, is say waladani tawilun. We can't say waladani tawilun. Why? What would be the reason for that? Well, the reason for it is waladani is dual al muthanna and tawilun is singular al mufrad. And we said that the fourth rule of agreement states agreement in al adadu number. Do they match in number? Do these two ismans match in number? The answer, of course, is no. Why? Because waladani is dual and tawilun is singular. So we need a sifatun or a version of Tawilun that will match Waladani in its number. So how do we form the dual of Tawilun? In exactly the same fashion, and that's the beauty of the dual. And that is that we add the Ani onto the end of Tawil and it becomes Waladani Tawilani. Straightforward, really. Waladani tawilani. The sifatun now matches a mausufun in al adadu. Does it match in a ta'rif wa tankir? The answer is yes, because both of them are unknown. They don't have al preceding them. Do they match in al jinsu? In gender, the answer to that is yes. Waladani is male, Tawilani is male. Did they match in Al Irabu? Did they match in Al Irabu? The answer is yes, because Waladani and Tawilani are both marfu'un, even though the ending has a kasra. But in this instance, the kasra does not denote a marfu'un state, rather, it's still. Rather, did I say it doesn't denote a marfun state? It does denote a marfun state. What the kasr doesn't denote is a majrurun state. It doesn't do that. The ani on the end still represents marfun in the dual. As I said, we'll speak about that in greater detail in, in, in the further lessons, insha'Allah. So there's the singular. I'll write it. So it's clear. There is the singular. Waladani, as we said, is al-muthanna, and that's the dual. So what remains, therefore, is al-jam'u, or the plural. And what is the plural of waladun? The plural of waladun is awladun. Awladun. Sorry. Awladun. 
Oladun is the plural of Waladun, which therefore means, that's right, boys. It means boys. It's a singular du dual and plural. So, if we want to say, now, tall boys, we can't use Tawilun because that's the singular of tall. Neither can we use Tawilani because that's the dual of tall. So what therefore do we use? We use the plural form of Tawilun, which you can't just make by changing something easily. That you will have to know, and I can tell you that the the plural of Tawilun in the masculine word is Tiwalun. So now it says Awladun Tiwalun. Tall boys. Now Awladun Tiwalun, Waladani Tawilani, and Waladun Tawilun all are uh, in agreement. Uh, between the Sifatun and Mosulfun with regards to Al Adadu. So we can be content that these sentences fulfill all four rules with regards to agreement between the Sifatun and the Mosulfun. Now we've met all of these have been mentioned in reality when we talk about Ali Arabu in the Marfu'an state, but we could easily have changed them and we did mention the example of Ra'a Waladan. Tawilan uh, and also li waladin tawilin to indicate a different uh, state in in the mansuba majorun and of course you can go back and uh, check that again if it's not clear but all of these instances or examples are all in al rab of the marfu'an state but we shouldn't be overly concerned because it still fulfills all of the rules of agreement between the Sifatun and the Mosulfun. Now the only other point that I wanted to mention before we conclude is that even though I've said, stated that the Sifatun of the plural here, Oladun, has to be a plural Sifatun because they have to match in an Adadu. There is an exception and of course there's always an exception to something. And that is, with regards to, uh, if we remove this, inanimate objects, or as we say in Arabic, غَيْرُ aqilin, that which does not have intellect. That which does not have intellect has a slightly different rule relating to it. For example, if we say Burjun, Burjun, what does Burjun mean? It means a tower, a tower, just as Wasamai Dhatil Buruj, and the sky by the sky, the one that owns or contains the lofty towers. So Burjun relates to a tower. If we want to say a tall tower, then we would say Burujun Tawilun. Burujun Tawilun. Now, we said that they have to match in Al Adadu. And of course, it does match. Burujun Tawilun. It does match. But when you have a Ghayru Aqilin Ismun, a noun which is inanimate or devoid of intellect or an alternative way to understand it is a non-human noun. Whenever you have a non-human noun then you have a choice with regards to the plural of the isman. Meaning, what's the plural of Burujun? Burujun. Burujun. Burujun is the plural of Burujun, towers. If we want to now say tall towers, 
we have two options. We have a choice. Either we can use the plural form of Tawilun that we've already used when we described Oladun, and that was Tiwalun. So we can say Barujun, Tiwalun. We can say that. And of course, these all still match in Al Irab wal Jins, in this case, the Tankir and Al Adid, because Al Adid number, that's plural and that's plural. Or we have an alternative. In Arabic, when you're Mausufun, when the Isman that you're going to describe is Ghayru Aqil, devoid of intellect, such as Baruja, you are allowed to use the singular female form to describe it. So it's allowed to say Barujun and the single female form is Tawilatun. Tawilatun. So that's a concession. And for the beginner it does make it easier because sometimes it's easier, well it's certainly easier to form the female version of the singular masculine sifatun because we went from tawilun to tawilatun merely by adding a term boot on the end it's sometimes easier to use that with regards to non-human uh, asma'un nouns than it is to know necessarily the plural form of that noun but as I mentioned, uh, you have an option it's entirely up to yourself which one you're going to decide to use so we'll conclude on that point, but just to mention, therefore, by way of a very uh, brief uh, summary, and that is that there are four rules of agreement between the Sifatun and the Mausufun. They are that it must match in their grammatical state, which is the ending that we've already spoken about in our previous lesson. They must match in al Jinsu their gender. So if the Mausufun is male, the Sifatun must be male, and if the Mausufun is female, the Sifatun must be also female. They must match in a, a Ta'rifu wa Tankir, so if the Mausufun is indefinite, meaning has a Tanwinun on the end, then the Sifatun must be definite, and if the Mausufun has Alif Alam, so we introduce Alif Alam here, Al Waladu, then similarly, the Sifatun must have Al, must be an agreement between those two, uh, and now they are with regards to Tarif and Tarif and similarly Al Adadu in number. So that's singular, and that's singular, singular, and singular. Then we have uh, a plural here, and we're allowed to use a plural male to indicate a plural male Mausufun, and similarly that's a plural male Mausufun, and we're allowed to use a singular female. Uh, sifatu, and that's the choice that you have uh, entirely dependent upon yourself. So that is the four rules with reg uh, relation to agreement between the Sifatun and the Mausufun. And we hope that's clear inshallah ta'ala. And if you do have any questions or comments, then you're free to leave it below. And we will see you insha'Allah ta'ala in our next lesson. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.